Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of DeLorean Tech, and today we've got a video of a fuel line replacement in this DeLorean. We went with a DeLorean Performance Industries 13 fuel line kit, and the kit comes with the 13 fuel lines, all of the copper washers that you need, it also comes with uh, new injector clips, a few other things. Uh, I did want to go over uh, the differences between the 9 line kits out there and the 13 line kits. So the the kits that replace just the 9 fuel hoses, the hoses that are, are replaced are all 6 of these injector hoses right here. The cold start hose, which is this short one right here. So you have two lines coming out of the warm-up regulator, also known as the control pressure regulator. The longer line, which is this one right here, is the primary pressure line. That goes from here all the way to this side of the distributor. And then on the other side, you've got the control pressure line, which goes from here to the top of the distributor. So you can see that right there. So those are the nine lines that you usually get in a kit, so six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, 13 hose kit is going to include this line, which is your supply fuel hose that runs down to the fuel filter. And it goes right over to here. That's the main source of supply to the distributor. The other fuel line that you get is the return fuel line, which is this one right here. You can't really see it too well, but it goes straight down and into the bottom of the engine compartment here. You can kind of see the connection right there. I think it goes back to the fuel pump. So you get that hose. You also get two hoses for the frequency valve. So this is the frequency valve feed line. So the DPI kit, it comes with this U-shaped uh, fitting on the end of it. And it's this line right here. And that goes up to right back here. And the other line it comes with is this short line right there. And they also include some additional fittings right here and a little piece of hose and a couple of clamps so you can secure that to the frequency valve. There's different ways of, of connecting it. Uh, I know DeLorean Europe has a, three, a 13 line kit and they have a, a little bit of a different setup but it accomplishes the same thing. The frequency valve originally came with the line that uh, the return line that goes back to the distributor um, and since then they have uh, DeLorean Europe, DPI have uh, come up with their own solutions. So that is a total of 13 lines that have to be replaced. I definitely recommend replacing all of the lines in the car if you have the original fuel lines. This video that we're going to go through doesn't show you in detail how to replace every single one, but it's really more intended to be a general overview of what's involved. And we start with the two injection hoses or fuel line hoses at the fuel pump. We replace the, the fuel pump itself, and that's an upgrade from the original to one of the AC Delco fuel pumps and we also replace the fuel filter so the DPI kit comes with a new fuel filter as well and then we start from the fuel filter with the primary supply hose and then we start with the injector hoses the cold start valve hose the warm-up regulator hoses and then the frequency valve hoses and the return line back to the fuel pump. So it's a very involved process. I don't recommend tackling it if you're unsure of your capabilities. There's a lot going on here. There is some bench work when you secure the injectors 
injector hoses you have to that has to be done on the bench but the primary benefits are are obviously uh, safety is really number one uh, as far as performance goes I didn't notice any difference in, in performance but safety is really the major factor because those older style hoses which are 40 years old have been known to break down and cause fires, engine fires. I would definitely recommend going with a new hose set. So you've got DMC, they sell I believe a 9 hose kit. If you want to go with a 13 hose kit, DPI and DeLorean Europe carry those. I would recommend just staying with the the more familiar companies that are supplying these. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get into the video. The first step is to replace the fuel pump and both fuel line hoses with brand new components. The original Bosch unit is still in working order, but will be replaced with a more reliable GM style pump from AC Delco. So those orange hoses, those ones had to go. And depending how many miles you have in your car and how well it was maintained, you may have all sorts of stuff in your fuel tank. The Bosch pumps were fairly hit and miss. It's always better to upgrade to a more modern pump. This is the original. While we are replacing the fuel pump and hoses, we are reusing the OEM fuel sender. That one still works, so no problem there. We'll just package up the old stuff. Those orange hoses, those ones, they looked okay, but reliability issues with those. I decided to go with brand new stuff. Oh yeah, cover up your gas tank. Cleaning the fuel sender wiring harness with WD-40 electric or electronic cleaner so in the relay compartment you're gonna have to jumper the RPA RPM relay harness so what you do is you bypass the RPM relay by connecting pins 87 and 30 together that will keep the RPM running during the test this happens to be a Dave McKean unit. So you'll unplug that and then you'll jumper the two pins. And when you're not testing the fuel pump, disconnect the battery. In order to operate the fuel pump without actually turning on the vehicle, we're gonna use the inertia switch under the dash. So the up position is off, the down position is on. Next thing you want to do is solder together the new fuel pump harness with the original fuel pump connection. Definitely want to make sure you've got good connections here. The fuel pump is one of the most important parts of the vehicle. You don't want to cut corners here. So there are the two electrical connections that we made and then we're going to want to use some heat shrink to seal those connections off. You definitely do not want to use electrical tape. The heat shrink makes sure you've got a much better protected connection than if you were to use electrical tape. Got to make sure these things don't come apart. So just make sure you've got a strong connection. You can see the DPI 
fuel lines in the background. We've got a lot of stuff to install here. 13 fuel lines, a fuel pump, new hoses. So here we are back in the trunk and we are going to be cutting out those inferior orange fuel line hoses. They used to be popular back in maybe the late 90s. These weren't too bad upon inspection, but if your car hasn't been running for a while and you've left fuel in the fuel tank for a long time and you start running these, these orange fuel lines have a tendency to break down, which is something you don't want to have in the car. Sometimes these can get a little stuck. You're really going to have to cut those off. So here we are, both of them have been removed. Clean off those barb fittings. Those are the two hard lines coming from the engine compartment and going to the fuel filter. So now we're going to be installing the new fuel line hoses. We're using an AC Delco MU1777. And for the fuel line hoses, we're using Gates Barricade hoses, made in USA. We got these on Rock Auto. They're some of the best out there. Part number 27335. It's 5 16th inch, 225 PSI rated. And the hose clamps ratchet those down. So these hose clamps that we're using here are fuel line specific. We got the 7 16th inch clamp, clamping range. So in this area, you're going to be checking for leaks here when you're finished. I just wanted to point that out. So here we're installing the supply line. And you'll notice there is a check valve that was installed in line with that main supply fuel line hose. Prevents uh, hot start issues actually using that check valve. So if you've got hot start issues, this is a simple upgrade. Could make a big difference. We're tightening up this hose clamp here. This is the supply line hose going to the supply line, the hard line. And that check valve is a 5 16 by 5 16 hose barb. We picked this one up from US Plastic Corporation. It's got a one pound opening pressure. and can withstand up to 500 pounds of back pressure. I don't recommend not installing a check valve in line with a brand new fuel pump. So just making sure to clamp down enough they want to point out that the fuel pump itself hasn't been clamped down. You want to kind of keep that a little free so you can make sure your connections are good and nothing is being pinched or kinked. So 
So here we are connecting the pump fittings to the ends of the hoses and connecting those to the inlet and outlet. It's pretty cramped in here. You just gotta make sure that you position the fuel pump in such a way that it's not going to rub against the cover. The cover kind of sits in there a little bit low and has a tendency to kind of rub onto there. I think what I ended up doing is put a, putting a little bit of some foam padding that's just to kind of space it a little bit so it doesn't rub. So again, you don't want to clamp the pump down. You want it to kind of be in there a little free so you can reposition the pump as needed just to make sure you got the right fit. Just fine tuning and making some adjustments here. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of room to work in there, but we did end up getting it. These are some very critical connections, so take your time. Make sure you're doing it right. Now you can clamp down the fuel pump once you've got the proper orientation. Let's go ahead and tighten that down. Again, the goal is to make sure that your hoses are not kinked or twisted. reconnect your fuel sending unit. And then lastly you want to wire everything up. Get your new wiring harness that's been soldered onto the existing fuel pump harness. Go ahead and make that connection. Again notice how the harness is sort of pointed away from the front end of the car. That's so the fuel pump compartment cover doesn't rub against that. And 
Now we're going to fill the car back up with gasoline in order to test the new fuel pump. Make sure it's operating properly. Now you don't want to do the, the job with a bunch of fuel in the tank, so we try to empty it out as much as we could at first. But for testing, you want to make sure you have enough fuel in there. So as you can see, it's a pretty clean installation. We've gotten rid of all of the old hoses that were in there. This is definitely a, a spot that is prone to fires if you've got a bad installation or old hoses in there. So now we're going to take the jumper wire out, having tested the fuel pump and plug the RPM relay back in. Lastly, you want to reconnect the battery and test the fuel pump. So we'll start the car up, test it out, make sure it works. So once you've got your fuel pump working properly, you're going to want to replace the fuel filter. The DPI set comes with a fuel filter. This was a little tricky to, to put back in. It was pretty easy to remove, but it was a little tricky to put back in. We were able to get it. It's just kind of difficult because we weren't using a lift. So there is a strap on there that you're going to want to remove. So the hard line coming from the fuel pump is entering the fuel filter from the bottom. So you're going to want to remove the bolts that are holding the filter bracket in place. Take care not to damage that hard line. You'll notice there's some Teflon tape on those fittings, so you definitely want to use Teflon tape on all of the threaded fittings. So those are the original hoses. Here is the new main fuel supply line from the fuel filter. The new stainless braided main supply line is one of the four additional hoses that you get. Normally you have a nine hose set, but this is a 13 hose set. Here's the new fuel filter. So we've got that in. Connecting it to the new main supply line was a little challenging but we did end up getting it it's kind of hard because it's really hard to see up in there but we did ultimately finish it and here's a close-up of the, the fuel filter that it's included with the DPI kit you can see that banjo connection on top that was a little hard to do there's the new supply line, you can kind of see it. It's a little better there. So now we're going to start with all of the stainless fuel line connections. So all 13 of these are going to have to be replaced. I 
Before you start the installation, you want to make sure that all the hoses are of the proper length and you want to do some test fits just to make sure that you don't run into any surprises along the way. We always start with the fuel injector hoses, do one side, finish that and move on to the other side. So DPI does include new injector clips with the kit. So the banjo eye fittings can actually be rotated just to make sure that you've got a correct fit. This can get a little tricky. But you just got to be patient and take your time. And working with all these fuel lines together, it is a little challenging. But as long as you start with the injector lines first and then do all of the other lines after that, I think that's the way to go. So here we are installing the banjo bolt. Now DPI also sells brand new stainless banjo bolts. You could purchase those as well. The kit does include all the copper washer seals. My banjo bolt bolts were pretty good so I didn't need to replace those but that is an option in case you're interested in that. Don't tighten everything down until the very end of the installation so you have some flexibility in moving the lines around a little bit to ensure the best fit possible. Again, you don't want any twisting or kinking. Just want to make sure everything is straight. Here we are removing the fuel return line. Or at least loosening the, uh, the banjo bolt for it. So that's one of the injectors being removed. along with the hose. A close up of the distributor and there's one of the injectors. I definitely recommend cleaning the injectors using this as an opportunity. In order to connect the injectors to the new fuel lines, you've got to do that on the bench. So you'll assemble the injector and the fuel line together and then take those and install them in the vehicle.
So here we are installing the second fuel line, injector fuel line. Again, you want to make sure that you chose, choose the right path for the fuel line. You don't want to wrap around some of those other lines that are in there. The spark plug wires. So it's pretty much the same process for each fuel injector line. So here's how you remove the old clips. It's kind of difficult. So what Chris has done here is he's kind of created a little hook to grab onto those clips. It's really difficult to get your fingers down in there and this seems to be the best way to do it. So you can see we're replacing the last fuel line and then we'll move on to the other side and do the other three injector lines. Again, you're going to want to make sure you do this one side at a time. So we've now moved on to the other side. Go ahead and repeat the process. This is probably the most challenging part of the whole fuel line replacement is the injector lines. The other hoses, the other lines are pretty accessible. It's just getting down into the where the injectors are is a little difficult. So here we are rotating one of the banjo eye fittings to make sure you've got a good connection. are again using that little hook to release the injector clip that's down in there and these ones you just throw away and use the new ones that DPI includes it's pretty easy to remove the injectors once you've got that clip unfastened That one looks pretty dirty. We'll go ahead and take an opportunity here and clean that off. So here we are installing or reinstalling the fifth injector hose get to push down the clips
one took a lot longer. It was just very difficult to access where that injector is. So here we are. That here's that really problematic last one. This one is tucked away way in there. This one was really difficult to remove. Even more difficult to reinstall. Okay, so the main fuel line, the main supply line has been installed. And that is on the distributor right there. In the lower chamber, it's connected directly to the lower chamber. And there's also the control pressure line that's installed on top of the distributor. And that is connected to the warm up regulator. AKA the control pressure regulator. And here we are installing the fuel line on the cold start valve, the cold start injector line. This one's probably the easiest. I think it's the shortest line, maybe the, um, the shortest smaller diameter line in the kit. So just removing the cold start injector line from the distributor. Almost lost that one. finally got it and this is supposed to be the easiest one this is a little bit more challenging here because it's on the side on top of the distributor you've got a little bit more forgiveness but on the side you could drop one of those washers into the engine compartment and you've got to go get another one so that takes care of the cold start injector line The kit also comes with two new hoses for the frequency valve and it also comes with the return line. Here we are routing the primary pressure line. That also connects to the lower chamber of the distributor. And that is going to the warm-up regulator, AKA the control pressure regulator. This one here, I think we decided to install this one last or pretty close to last because there was a lot more connections that we had to make next to it. So the other lines that are next to that are the return line, the main return line, and also the two lines from the frequency valve.
So just making sure we've got a good fit and the line is not kinked or twisted. If you kink a line, or you've got a line coming in at a sharp angle, you can definitely restrict the flow of fuel and that's definitely gonna affect performance. So we're going to be disconnecting the return fuel line here. This one was kind of hard because the connection point was pretty far down into the engine compartment. So you'll need a combination wrench to undo that, that hose nut right there. But we finally got it. And here we are removing the return line from the distributor. The return line, the main return line, shares a connection point with the return line from the frequency valve. And there it is. Here is the new return fuel line, as well as the frequency valve fuel line. There is the connection to the return line. In this installation, the position of the return line, the main return line, and the frequency valve return line were swapped. So in the original installation, the main return line was on the outside of that connection right there where the banjo bolt is. Now it's on the inside and the return line to the frequency valve was on the outside. That's that line he's holding there right now. It just works out a lot better. And there's the connection to the frequency valve. The kit does come with this little section of fuel line hose that you will clamp on to the frequency valve and then to the frequency valve return line. As you get closer to the end of the entire installation, it gets a little tricky. So we ended up disconnecting the primary pressure line and now we're reinstalling it. Now that we have an idea of how the other hoses were gonna be routed because this one comes from the warm-up regulator all the way to the other side of the distributor So finding the correct path that will ensure you don't have any twists or kinks in the line is kind of challenging. So we've got the correct path for that one. We'll go ahead and make that connection later. And here it is. Now we're disconnecting the fuel line that goes to the frequency valve. This is the frequency valve supply line or feed line. You 
can kind of see it down in there. The line that DPI includes is pretty cool. It's got this U-shaped fitting at the end, so you don't have a kink in the line. I thought that was pretty, pretty clever of them. Makes for a much easier installation. So the last line connection we're making here is for the frequency valve. And there's the final connection. So everything's all connected. It's going to go ahead and connect the frequency valve to the U-fitting. So we ended up just taking the frequency valve off, sort of repositioning it so it's a little easier to install. And these lines are not quite as flexible as the original hoses, so you're definitely going to have to do a little bit of trial and error at times just to make sure you've got these hoses properly routed. We're going through and making sure all the banjo connections are tight. There are torque specifications in the workshop manual. So once you've done a final final, you want to go back and torque those banjo bolt connections down to factory specifications. You definitely want to check for leaks after this before you do a test start. Once you're sure you've got no leaks, you go ahead and start the car up. Make sure everything's working. All right, everybody, that's the video. Thanks for watching. And before we're finished, I did want to plug DeLorean World Magazine. Uh, this issue, volume 30, number 2 of 2019, which just came out recently, has a really great article on DeLorean engine fires. So, like I said at the beginning, your main reason for replacing these fuel lines is safety. There, This is actually a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... 8, 9, 10, 10 page article on preventing fires, identifying safety issues, all sorts of stuff. So if you haven't gotten a hold of this magazine, I definitely recommend it. Um, there's even a, a little DeLorean Tech article in here. Just a one page article kind of plugging the website and the YouTube channel as well as the Facebook page. So DeLorean World published by the DOA, DeLorean Owners Association. Just go to DeLoreanOwners.org or you can go to the DeLorean Owners Association Facebook page. Definitely recommend it. Anyway guys, that's the video. Thanks for watching.